Um, in 2018, I applied uh, every year, uh, the National Portrait Gallery of London has this award. So I, I applied with um, a painting that is actually uh, more of my uh, current work and series that I'm working on that sort of fuses uh, the narrative of different um, uh, diverse people in New York City. And so I applied with that and was just really thrilled to get in in 2018. And then one of the amazing opportunities that they offer is for the artist to apply for a travel grant. So I, um, I submitted my proposal and of course I thought, you know, well, should I, you know, should I pick a place that I've never been to like Spain or Hawaii? And, but at the more and more I thought about it, I kept coming back to, um, Amritsar, Punjab, which is in the northern part of India, um, a place that I have a connection to in my culture. So I submitted the proposal to, uh, my proposal was really to do portraits of um, volunteers that work at a free kitchen um, at the Golden Temple in Amritsar, India, and, um, and really sort, sort of shine a light on the work that they do. They, they feed, they have this huge um, operation there, a big, big kitchen that feeds uh, 50 to 100,000 people every single day, uh, every day of the year. And, um, and so I uh, was able to go in, in 20, uh, October of 2019 uh, to visit and to create paintings. Um, look at some of the paintings you created from that, that experience. I, you know, I'm just curious because none of us have been able to travel recently. And since it was your first time to Amritsar, um, what, what was the biggest difference from what you expected before you went on the trip to when you were actually there? Well, I have to give full disclosure. It's actually a place I had been to before. Okay. So, which is why I was um, really unsure whether I would get the, the award because I thought maybe perhaps they wanted some, you know, wanted you to pick a place that you would otherwise not have been to. But I had, um, I think what was really striking was having visited as a child versus as an artist. So when I went there as an individual person, sort of, you know, for most of the artists, um, you know, who've traveled to visit their families, it gets taken up by, by meals and, you know, visiting cousins you haven't seen in a long time. And, but this time it really gave me the opportunity to focus on seeing it in a new light from the perspective of a painter. And, um, so it, it, that, that was the part that really struck me was just, um, you know, all of the uh, senses at once are tapped, you know, including a visual sense of composition and uh, noticing the light and the atmosphere. Now we don't have time to play the video, but I highly recommend everyone um, to just Google uh, Manu and BP Travel uh, Award and watch the five minute quick documentary of your experience. It's, it's really amazing. I wanna focus a little bit on um, sort of the, the academic style of painting uh, that I imagine you, you learned at, uh, picked up at the New York Academy of Art and just to learn a little bit more about your process. Um, with respect to this, this award, maybe you could talk about how you decided which subjects to paint, and then even talk about your physical process of how you go from idea to, to finished painting. Sure. Um, so I, I studied um, at the academy and with um, a, a mentor named John Frederick Murray at the School of Visual Arts and definitely was taught such a, invaluable lessons around uh, composition. Um, but I to answer the first question, I when I went to the the free kitchen, one thing that really struck me was that every volunteer had a very particular relationship to the volunteer work that they were doing. There's, uh, so uh, it, with this particular gentleman on, um, everyone on uh, can see on the screen on the left-hand side pouring tea, um, he was just, uh, uh, one thing that struck me about him was the light that was coming through hitting the steam and just sort of this, um, I wanted to evoke this sense of comfort that's com that comes from the tradition of drinking cha or tea. It's called cha da vela, which means time for tea and, um, and is a deep tradition in Indian culture, not just at this um, free kitchen. Um, and then choosing uh, other sort of, cause there were 
there are over 400 volunteers. So you are absolutely correct that that it was very difficult to to whittle it down to who I wanted to 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 do portraits of. So with the three women on the right hand side, um, the paintings called Roshni. Um, what what that what I saw in that was a sense of camaraderie. So whereas some volunteers really went inwards with their own sort of contemplative way of, um, of doing their service, these three women were just very harmonious, not only in, you know, from everything from, from the way that they were flipping the, you know, rolling the, the, the dough and flipping the flatbreads to be, to be cooked, but from what they were wearing and the camaraderie that they had with each other. So I, I was trying to just pick different aspects of um, the different personalities that I that I witnessed and their relationship to to how they experienced their time while they were there. Yeah, there's there's such beautiful paintings. I, I imagine Margie is going to tell us that we're going to have to move on in a few minutes. Sure. Uh, I just want to say that you know you can guess from you know the dress that the subjects are Indian subjects, but I'd say even without taking that into consideration, just the beautiful colors that you use in these paintings, um, of uh, the headdresses of even these little pops of color you see on the rolling pins, mm -hmm. um, you know, are, are just, uh, just beautiful touches in your work. Thank you. And, and just to speak a little bit about the sort of classical training and technique uh, real briefly is that, you know, mostly I, I focus on composition, you know, how to lead, you know, the viewer's eye through it. And so I would say with all of these paintings, they, the composition becomes very key. So I'll start with um, a little color sketch that is uh, really sort of the abstract under, underpinnings of a painting. So the narrative is an extra layer on top of that, but it's really so in, in their arms, just sort of placing how to move the viewer through the paintings and, um, and let that drive my decision making, so. Beautiful, one, one last, maybe not a quick question, um, but part of, your, uh, part of your research into these paintings is about discovering more about your own uh, Sikh heritage. Yeah. And uh, part of the power of art, of visual art, is that you can also communicate that to the rest of us. And um, is there something you discovered or something embedded in your paintings um, about your heritage that you want your audience to know? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that um, one thing that, that is very important to me and has been throughout um, has been to find a way to share, you know, to explore my identity. I was born here and my parents immigrated in the 60s. So I'm part of the diaspora, you know, that, that was really longing for a deeper connection with my heritage, you know, having some, there's this feeling of, of being displaced. So for me to be able to, um, you know, win the, the grant and be able to go back to sort of the, the mothership, you know, and be able to um, capture the sense of, of what I did and be able to share it with, it, you know, in London at the National Portrait Gallery was just a uh, qu quite a thrill. And, um, and I should mention that the one that's on the left, Jada Vela, is actually in, um, if anyone has, t uh, you know, the ability to go down to uh, the New York Academy of Art, it's in a show called Parallels and Peripheries right now. Um, and, uh, and so just even with that, it's a particular show that is um, for Black, Indigenous people of color. So just, just to be able to share and represent the underrepresented in, in art. So that's been very meaningful. Manu, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's an honor to have you. Thank I didn't think to ask you if cha is more like my English breakfast or Darjeeling. So that'd be a follow-up conversation. Sure, absolutely. I would thank love you. to, thank you so much. I'd love to invite uh, Sabina, if you don't mind unmuting and we'll pin you up to the top on the hot seat. Yes, hey, right. Hey, how are you? Good, how about you? Great to talk I'm to you. Well, thank you. Um, so Sabina is a New York based artist. Um, I read in your bio that you spent some of your summers growing up uh, in India at your grandparents. Yeah. At their home in a, in a rural Indian village. And I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit about how maybe that inspired you to become an artist. Yeah, sure. Well, 
I wouldn't say like, so, I mean, it's more, I, I want to say it's the energy from being there and growing up. That's what's uh, uh, infused into a lot of my work. So, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people, they come from Indian origin, but they come from say the bigger cities, you know, such as Delhi or Bombay. And I was literally spent summers in smaller, smaller, like uh, Punjabi towns. And it's just, um, what I noticed is this, like this, what I call like an orderly chaos. I mean, there's just like, you know, throngs of people going in all different directions on all the animals, the cows and dogs, they're all moving. And it seems like, you know, it should be like one big accident waiting to happen, but it isn't, it all works out somehow. And there's just this, uh, you know, this harmonious uh, chaotic energy, but, but things, you know, nobody, you know, uh, bats an eye, like, you know, everything just keeps on moving. I noticed that same kind of energy in New York City a lot too, where it's just, you know, I marvel well before the pandemic, you know, how you just, you could, I could see in my mind, like so many accidents just not happening by just mere seconds or mere feet, but yet, you know, millions of people, they're getting to where they need to go and doing what they need to do. And um, it just all works together like this orderly chaos. As long as you don't stop walking on the sidewalk, then everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious because your art is so uh, sort of pop art inspired, which right. I feel like is is partly you know so deeply rooted in New York. Yeah, and I want to hear about how that became sort of a, a style or a genre that you would like to to emulate in your art. Sure. So actually, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I was like, um, so that's okay. pretty much where I spent most of my okay. life. Yeah. So Andy Warhol, and um, and I went to Carnegie Mellon. University, which is, you know, where that's where Andy Warhol is from. But I grew up, I mean, surrounded with his art to the point, you know, where you would go into like a small coffee shop or a deli when I was so young and I didn't even think about it. And I have all these kind of subliminal pop art images in my mind, like the soup cans and everything. And, um, you know, I being, I think I didn't even understand who Andy Warhol was. I was so little. And then it, it was like, you know, you always think Pittsburgh kind of small scale, like how could anybody from here be like super famous? And then later on, you realize that a lot of those, um, I naturally just gravitate towards that style and images because it's kind of ingrained um, in my mind. That's Join amazing. the meeting. Uh, I, I've gone to Pittsburgh primarily to, to do an Andy Warhol pilgrimage. Uh, <laughs> it's a great city. Yeah. Oh. yeah, the Andy Warhol Museum is amazing. So uh, I, I was embarrassed because before uh, researching your work, I actually didn't know who a Amitabh was as an actor. And then I realized that's like not knowing who Brad Pitt is. Yeah, yeah. He's so I'm glad you introduced me to him. I'm gonna have to watch some of his films. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask about, you know, pop art is a very American, it's not even Western. It's like on the branch of pure American art style. It's interesting how you combine that with uh, Indian uh, references, such as Amitabh, but also in some of some of your process and how you layer to create these images. Can you talk a little bit about the combination of of sort of East and West and in process and in subject? Sure, and I think that speaks a lot of you know to who I am and my background. And it was kind of, it's, it was important to me because I, yeah, absolutely. Like um, you don't see in Indian art, you don't see, you know, pop art isn't represented. And to, you know, take an Indian like iconic subject and, you know, um, you know, just make it into a work of pop art. I mean, that was something I want to also introduce uh, viewers to, especially Indian viewers, because if I think of my own uh, family and extended family, you know, the emphasis when a lot of Indian art is on religious art. So to also to be able to experience, you know, I mean, I mean, to me, Amitabh Bachchan is the perfect example. I mean, he's iconic and, um, you know, there would be nobody in India who hasn't seen at least one of his movies or know who he is. He's that like, um, you know, and he, he goes across generations. But then I also wanted to use elements that are very Indian um, to trigger memories for people that they had, you know, growing up or something that would remind them of, of their cousins or their time being in India, you know, so I've used a lot of um, Indian layers in the background. There's not only um, Indian movie posters, but there's like, you know, um, some famous drinks in there. Like I have, you know, thumbs up references. There's, um, you know, Amul butter and, you know, just Raj Dude, all these Indian brands and Indian advertisements, you know, so really taking that 
pop art style um, and then, you know, bringing it over here. And then I also love to work with a lot of layers and a lot of fragments. The idea being that every time you look at the art, you see something new, like I hope you see something new. And, and every time, you know, when you see something new, you get some kind of emotion, whether it's, you know, happy or sad or it triggers some kind of memory or some time or some, some person. And that's what I'm really, um, you know, trying to do with the art and kind of also um, bring that energy that I feel when I'm in India, where just all these layers, you know, how could it, how could it work? But all of a sudden at the end, it just, it comes together and it, it makes sense, hopefully to the viewer. Yeah, just so everyone on the on this um, Zoom knows, this is actually a detail of the pre of, of the piece on the previous slide, just to see all those layers and references. Um, you know, I, I love the combination of these these two things, and I, I I wish I knew more about Ganesh as a deity. He he's he may be my favorite. Uh, uh, Hindu god as an image, uh, having seen him in different works at the Metropolitan Museum. And I kind of think of him as a superhero, as you know, obviously <laughs> doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. But I like how you kind of juxtapose, uh, you know, a Ganesh with a Batman reference. Yeah, I think part of it is, you know, that's like, um, that's who I am, right? Like I am, I am American, I am Indian, I have all these experiences, why be limited to by one thing or one experience? And um, with the with the Ganesha, I'm trying to like, you know, depict it in a very different and modern way. I've, it's on, um, you know, a vintage newspaper background. And kind of also, you know, growing up, Ganesha was always depicted very ornately in the very bright Indian colors. And so I, I wanted not only to do something different, but sometimes I always find that, um, it, like you know, it, it can it can take away because if you're trying to be serene or calm or focused or kind of meditative, then the you know then I want something that's a little more calming versus all the the col the colors that are popping out, which can which are beautiful. I love the colors, yeah. um, and I use them in different parts of the artwork. But I wanted to you know depict Ganesha in a, in a different way. Well, it's one of my favorite things about art in general is that it really can trigger things for you personally, maybe just the immediate image that you see, but in your work, being able to spend time and look into details and see brands that you remember from this experience growing up or um, the way you talked about, you know, uh, things growing up or maybe things from life today. And um, you can really spend a lot of time with your work. So, um, we're gonna to have to keep moving because I'm, I'm Margie. I don't see you on the screen, but I know I'm way behind. So we're gonna, we're gonna to try to do our best to catch up. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thank you so much for for joining us, uh, Sabina. Um, Raj actually had something come up. He's in Dubai and had an emergency, so he's not able to join us. Um, Raj, on behalf of all of us, thank you for helping us catch up on time. Um, I'll just say very quickly that Raj is a very talented sculptor. He's, he starts with uh, photography and then creates the 3D representations through sculpture, bronze, fiberglass, clay, terracotta. Um, you can find his, more of his work on the ICC website. Um, moving on, uh, Sarasvati, are you unmuted and pinned? Yeah. yeah. Great. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks to everyone who has joined us today to share our experiences and journey as an artist. And thanks to ICC and everybody who has given us an amazing opportunity. Yeah, we're really excited to have you and you are the only hyper realist uh, painter here with us tonight. Um, so Sarah Spathi is a New Jersey based artist. And you were born in uh, Chennai, India. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can you tell us about um, it, was your decision to pursue food as a subject? Is that more related to um, growing up uh, in in Chennai, or is it more of sort of sort of a um, you know missing missing some of the food that you can't maybe you can find here in New Jersey or New York, or maybe you can't. <laughs> 
um it's actually uh i'm uh i'm a self-taught artist and uh, i accidentally found that uh, i could um i'm so interested in painting you know i started just like scribbling and then i just fell in love and you know drawing and painting and i always uh used to learn from uh the internet uh used to google what all the videos and lessons that came on my way and then i just started off my journey as an artist to do a few landscapes abstracts and everything so during my journey i i just wanted a a unique identity to myself and to my uh, style or my artwork that uh, can um, show my uh, this this belongs to me and when i was doing that i uh, came across uh, the food mega realist tjels parnasis uh mega realistic uh, burgers and french fries and mary ellen johnson's peanut butter uh, sandwiches and everything I, i really fell in love with those intricate details of their texture and everything so i again i i started searching like how does indian food look in that way and to my surprise and to my knowledge till now i was not able to find a very realistic form of indian food um then i uh, uh, dig deep into the subject and i thought like um, uh, why should i do this then i thought like food is the one day common thing that is, i mean one day thing that is very common to everybody even when we are traveling we like to explore other cuisines or um, we like to uh, explore their food and we love to do all that you know so i thought like yeah this is a great subject and uh, the relation between or uh, the chronology of between the food and dining table has been from a long time like from 1865 you know from uh, from a very long time so i thought like why not i explore this being a self taught i was a little hesitant and then i just started because cooking is an expression of who we are and where we come from so this is how i started doing um, food and when i started my first work i was like uh, i will be never able to uh, do a food that was given by my prepared by my mom or my grandmother so i it is like a tribute that i'm giving back to my own uh, cuisine that's been known uh, worldwide in the realistic form of art So uh Chennai is that considered in southern India? Yes, it's a, it's in southern India. Yes. And but I saw that you do you do create paintings of food uh that is northern as well. I was wondering uh, if, if you have a preference personally on what you prefer to eat whether it's southern or northern Indian food. Uh, yeah, being so being from South India, the common breakfast, you know, is like dosa, idli, and we, whenever we go out to restaurants, we like to uh, try other North Indian foods. Like we we love food. Like we try to explore all kinds of foods because it's not easily made at home uh, from South. You you know you try you try you are tempted to eat from you know a North Northern food and everything. So this is how I try to cover all kinds of uh, cuisines from. from uh, india um because i want uh, i started with my own uh, culture and cuisine because uh, i need i need to understand the subject that is which have been very close to it and so that's how i started doing with the dosa is my first thing because from childhood it's been uh, associated from a very long time you know as a breakfast or as a dinner and everything but even every food has a very great history associated with when i started painting i started even digging the history behind it like you know um dosa has been from the 5th century it is a uh, recipe of it is is also in a sanskrit encyclopedia written by a king so Wow, well it's fascinating to research your subjects to that level to make the yeah. painting better but also imagine they're more delicious the next time you want to want to talk very quickly about uh your process. Um so before you were a self-taught painter, you actually have a background in being an engineer mm-hmm. and you bring some of that precision to your work. Um can you talk about how you go from staring at a blank canvas to something that makes us all hungry to look at? 
uh, first i i don't uh, take a reference pic from anywhere from the google or from internet or anything i try to prepare the food or uh, i try to get it from outside i try like if i have to paint a uh, naan i i need 50 pieces of naan that's ready and uh, i try to uh, assemble it in a way that looks really great uh, where the de depth and the details of the food is seen like uh, and then i click like almost like a uh, hand uh, 200 pics and i just reduce them to one pic uh, which is very uh, i feel that looks good in composition colors the values and everything and so uh, being self taught i don't have a right protocol to just uh, 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 whichever is correct i just start with a very fine detailed uh, drawing and then i go for several layers of paint where uh, till the till the place that i feel uh, yes i'm convinced and i feel like eating so that's where i stop it well uh, sarah swathi it was it was a bad idea on my part not to eat before uh, this gala cuz now i'm starving <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight and yeah. and uh hamali if you can unmute hello uh, and we'll pin you to the top Hi Hamali, how are you? Hi, hi Ray, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh Hamali uh Fidalia is a Queens-based artist. Um and actually we met a few months ago. It's great to reconnect here. Um Hamali is currently a third year student uh at the Grand Central Atelier, which is a great program. Uh it's a very academically rooted program. and um and students and graduates of that program can draw the human body maybe blindfolded and hyper realistically i guess you do everything from observations so that's by not true um her work is is absolutely breathtaking um i want to i want to talk a little bit about your life story is so interesting and i watched this ted talk that you did a few a few years ago when you talked about growing up in india and being on what you felt was a very defined path um and then diverging uh or i guess taking an unknown path that has gotten you to where you are today so maybe you can share some of that story with us uh yeah i mean it's like i started basically i i was good at studies so i did my bachelor's in computer engineering you know it's like a standard path that everybody follows like either you become a doctor or an engineer or you you know study law but then i was working as a programmer for a couple of years and i realized that this is not something that i wanted to do you know for the rest of my life and i was always like drawing and painting as a hobby artist but not like um, i never really thought about it that i would pursue it uh, as a career but that is what i wanted to do and there are like a lot of things like culturally uh it was like i quit my job because i thought it was i mean at that time it was easier it was it was like basically expected that you settle down you know and but then that didn't happen and i wanted to pursue a career in art and closest to art was animation so i did my masters in animation but then i still felt like something is missing and i wanted to i always wanted to like learn more study more i was like really curious and so i went to italy to like to just get a taste of like how it is like to pursue classical art and then it kind of opened up everything then i got like more serious you know like okay this is what i want to do and then i was looking uh, at an atelier that gives me the kind of education that i wanted like understanding the basics the fundamentals and i it was important for me that time to study like anatomy and the color how it works you know the composition and basically like the fundamentals of art which i never really studied you know in mm. yeah early on so i was like i have so many years and i really want to study everything really fast so where do i go so in between a lot of things happened i had my background in animation and i studied a little bit of art So loving Vincent movie happened and I applied and it was a great experience. So I got to work on that film project. It was like really good to combine my love for art and animation. 
So that is perfect. And I met really, really amazing people there. My A lot of my friends uh, that we still are in touch. And yeah, this is like, it's like, there's so much that has happened and I, I'm like just trying to. It, it's amazing how recognizable the brushstrokes of Van Gogh are, whether it's by his hand or by yours. Um, to the point where my four and a half year old daughter now loves Vincent Van Gogh paintings and can pick them out. What what amazes me about this project is that you so you actually uh, it's an animated film, but each screen is uh, painted. Yes, every, yeah, it's like for every one second of animation, we painted twelve paintings. So it's like working on twos. So. Yeah. So is showing this slide a good memory or can you not wait for me to change the change the channel? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good memory. It was very intense. You know, it was really intense to meet deadlines and everything for the film. But it was like really good experience because I have always lived in Mumbai. Um, and but the city that we lived in, in Poland, it, it was like a port city. So you know, the beaches and everything is like just 15 minutes bus ride. And we used to go through like the sides of a forest and pluck plums and cherries. And it was like a very wonderful experience living there, working on this project. Yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. And I imagine wild cherries are as good as wild strawberries and wild blueberries. You can tell <laughs> we, can't, we can't wait for summer here in New York. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about your current work, um, which again is just just stunning uh, from a just a technical perspective and they're just very they're just beautiful objects um i feel like these these could be painted by like caravaggio and my wife might be able to tell the difference but i i might not be able to can you talk about um i i think this is your final year at at gca yeah um, and, and obviously you're, you're a master of painting and drawing at this point. Where do you want to take this skill set? Um, is there a limit that you haven't reached in kind of like the Western ac academic tradition? Or are you thinking about using these skills in, in, on a new path? Yeah, first of all, I'm like, I feel I'm far from mastery, you know, it's like there's so much that has already been done. Like there's so much, such beautiful work that has already been produced. And um, we can only attempt, I think, you know, to learn that and use that skill set and the tools to create our own work and tell our story. Like for me, art has always been like, like writing a diary. So it's like, right now what i'm doing at school is like mainly like learning the nuances of how to manipulate colors and um yeah the technicalities but also it's like i will look at this work or some other work and i'll remember the time that i spent in that studio you know like sitting mm -hmm. there so it's like a memory it's like everything is like a diary it's like a journey and then you kind of share it you know but I also feel like the more I'm studying this, I also feel like um, sometimes um, it is also important to not like, um, how do I put it? Like, it's, if you, if you can refrain from showing all the details, sometimes you can convey the emotion, you know? It's like yeah. you give everything out and then sometimes the emotion gets lost. So right now what my focus is like, I'm trying to understand what to show and what to um, refrain from showing, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's, it's part of the magic that I feel like uh, was discovered sort of like, uh, you know, late 19th century, like kind of like Turner into Cezanne-ish where we realized that if you're a little looser, you know, Sergeant, if you're a little looser and you let the mind fill in some of the gaps, it can create more magic. Yeah. Just, yeah. just like I see in this, this uh, portrait, you know, like the, the shading on the neck is really like a flat shape flat with shape. some brush strokes showing. And yeah. it's, it's very believable when you look at it, but it's very modern in like the execution. Um, Amali, I, I could talk about your work until you and I were the only ones left on this call, but we're going to have to keep moving. Of course, yeah. 
So thank you so much for being here tonight and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Shreya, you are up next. If you don't mind unmuting and pinning. Hey, Shreya. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, enjoying this. I'm, I, as an artist, it's just fascinating hearing everyone's stories. This is so fun, right? Yeah, it's so much fun. It's, it's fascinating, yeah. Margie, let's do this all the time. Okay, so I wanna start, I came across this picture and I know we're gonna talk more about your abstract paintings, um, but I couldn't resist. Um, I couldn't resist to ask about the story behind this picture. So um, that's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And I was invited to New Delhi, the Lok Sabha, which is like the parliament house in 2014, I think. Um, basically, um, I started Art for a Cause and I started to give back a certain per, uh, percentage of proceeds from works that were inspired by villages, you know, by my visits to villages in India. So this picture is of a woman sweeping, you know, the dust off the dusty roads. And right at that time, Narendra Modi had started Swachh Bharat, which is Clean India Movement. And he came across this artwork and I got a call from the secretary and they said, the prime minister wants to meet you. So wow. that was <laughs> how it happened. That's amazing. So, so this is effectively the same as the Obama Hope poster for, <laughs> for Modi. Yes, yes. Amazing. Congratulations. That's, that's an incredible story. Um, like I said, we're going to focus more. So you're, you are um, the only artist that really has a foot both in abstraction and also very much in the figurative world. Um, I want to focus in on this series, which is about identity. <clears throat> and I saw in your bio that you uh, were born in India, um, raised in Belgium, and are now here in New York with us. And I'd love to hear how that path influenced this series of work. So uh, I'm not sure about you, but I always get asked, you know, Shreya, where are you from? And I'm like, I pause to think, where am I from? Should I say I'm from New York, America? Should I say I'm Indian, which you can obviously see, but I'm, I was raised in Belgium. So more than half of my life, I've lived in Antwerp, Belgium. So where am I from? I always like grapple with having to check that box, you know, when you get, you know, the box saying, which, you know, which race are you? I don't like to be boxed in. And I think none of us should. I think identity is something that's very layered. So what I did was I took the word identity in English, identity in Gujarati, which is my Indian native tongue, which is the word pariche, and also identiteit, which is identity in Dutch. So I took those three words and I just started writing them because uh, language is an expression of our culture. And I just thought that if I write the word identity in all the languages that I speak, I can kind of build this mesh, I can build this identity of myself, which is abstract, but like musical and it has patterns and it has negative and positive spaces. Yeah. It's a beautiful idea. And I love how, you know, uh, writing went from, it is an abstract concept going from, you know, symbolic to phonetic and then full circle back into like a like an abstract form. Um, and I imagine your process of creating this is, it's somewhat meditative as well to create these patterns. Yes. I mean, meditation is my source of inspiration. I think we all live such crazy lives, you know, wake up and just, just there's so much going on. And I feel like art is this kind of, you know, space where we can breathe and the space where we can actually allow to, you know, to hear our own thoughts. We, we allow ourselves to do that. Um, and if you see the work on the right, there is a little bit of red. I'm not sure if you, if anyone can see this, but I've embroidered the words. So it's almost like, where's Waldo? Because when you see these works, you don't see the words, but if you look closely, the words start coming at you. I, I would try to magic eye these, but I don't know if I can still pull that off. Um, I want to focus on one more 
work of art that I think is just a, a beautiful painting and on its own. What I love about art is you can you can be arrested by an image and then you get to learn more about it. And the and the more you learn, the more um, the more joy and the greater experience you can get from living with art or, or spending time with it. And um, I learned when researching this piece that um, in addition to being a beautiful abstract painting, it's, it's a vegan work of art. Yeah. And I'd love to hear how you were inspired to create that type of art and, and even what that means. Well, that's a great question. I didn't know what it mean, you know, I didn't know what it meant years ago. Um, when I started, uh, you know, as an artist, I did what everyone else does, right? We go to a store, we pick up paints. I started experimenting. And around two, three years ago, I started learning about animal cruelty and just all the parts of animals that goes into paints. And I was, I was mortified. I, you know, I am a vegetarian. And I decided that if I'm going to create anything is going to be with pure natural substances and you know raw materials and while i was doing my research i started creating my own pigments um, so the vegan pigments are made from minerals or from plants and there's like a whole process to it which is actually ancient that's that's what they used in you know lescaux in in the cave paintings and i just wanted to bring that process back and make it really meaningful in, in, in choice of material, right? Because, you know, we all know what we surround ourselves, just, you know, vibrations, you want it to be pure. Like, I want to create, but I also want to live with sustainable, environmental, you know, good choices in my life. So that's my journey into vegan art. That, that's amazing. I, I love learning about the technology of how just tubed paint allowed, you know, the impressionists to go outside of their studio. And, you know, frozen dinners helped us make dinner more quickly, but the more aware we can become of, um, you know, what, what we, the actions that we choose and how it impacts the world and the rest of us and, and how we can make more beneficial choices, even in the art that we make is a fascinating subject. Um, Shreya, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Sejal. If you don't mind unmuting, Sejal is our last but not least artist to join us tonight. Hey, Sejal. Hi. Can um, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Let's see. Uh, so Sejal Sakar, um, born in Kolkata, Kolkata, India. And uh, you studied drawing and painting, but then near and dear to my heart, you also studied printmaking um, as a master's. Um, now, I can't imagine most people on this call know what printmaking is, and we won't bore them to tears by talking about it. Um, but uh, it's, it's a very niche part of the art world. And if, if you're in it, you're in it. And uh, Sejal and I are both, both in that very non-cool club. Um, I'm glad you're last, even though I know it's randomly selected, because I think the subjects of your work are very heavy and meditative. And you take on a lot of heavy subjects, like mortality and struggle. Um, can you talk about? Uh, how you experience this piece, um, the finished piece, Void of Infinity, not the process of the conception, but how now that this is a finished object, you interact with it? This uh, work, actually, I uh, used to work with a lot of human figure in my earlier work uh, before migrating uh, in 2016. So, but after coming here, I'm so slowly going to uh, mostly in uh, simplifications and uh, less uh, figuration, less uh, representationals. But uh, you will find that uh, this work is not fall into that abstraction, but uh, 
there are certain uh, representation uh, context are there it is contextual uh, abstraction maybe so in this uh, dark uh, circle there are uh, urban uh, contents are there and uh, we are coming from certain complex uh, situation every day we are entering yeah, and so those are the lines those are the texture outside it is all our chaotic situation of life it's about me and i can um, i can feel about everyone is passing through so this is a overall situation about the planet or it is a urban way or in a larger way and so the the image of sort of almost like an urban organic grid or sprawl is almost a representation of how we experience our own lives and how we interact with one another um in your work also i think in this piece and and you know here here maybe a more literal example also takes on just cosmic ideas about yeah yes yes, yes. And scale and yeah, can this you, is can you reconcile sort of those you know the micro and the macro in your work exactly exactly so my work also take a, a very radical turn here and i am very much uh, optimistic and i feel like i uh, i am now enjoying a huge freedom to an open ended area so um, this kind of thing when it's, it's entered into my visual uh, spaces and i welcome everything and they give me a huge challenge because my work was so much uh, into human body oriented work earlier uh, so from that part to uh, to switch to a different uh, entirely different avenue uh, so it 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 is not an easy thing for me but i find that okay this is uh, actually take me to a very broader uh, way to explore to explore so many things to explore the mediums to explore the context and i find that every single work give me uh, inspiration to make more works those were uh, missing in my uh, baroda days when i was i was very much uh, uh, reasonably uh, settled there as an artist but i just uh, dismantle that kind of settlement after coming here to an expect uh, uh, to as an artist basically not a uh, individual and do you find that in the creative process of actually making your work is it more of a, a research is it is it a spiritual journey to a certain extent yes. yes though i am not a believer kind of person i am not religiously associated with any anywhere but there are certain other things which i find that yeah the cosmology the indian tantra and indian philosophical thing and there are certain connections are there so whether i am i believe it or not that is uh, not primary not uh, important uh, but if it is giving me certain kind of inspiration uh, in my life so why should not i explore this kind of subject absolutely and and i think um, i wanted to end on this piece i think this uh, may relate to the first piece we looked at in terms of yeah 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 it. so just, this is a city's a uh, nervous system kind of just i am take out a peel out a skin of a urban space and see it so uh, it is it is like that it is i can i can uh, uh, connect with a human body at the same time i can see it as a totally a urban urban scape and and there is, there, there is a there is 
faint uh, hint of human body also. There is a human body. You may not see it, but I can see that uh, there is a human body. Well, and, and on top of all that, it's just, a, it's a beautiful object and a beautiful work of art in itself. Um, I'd, I'd like to wrap up there with our um, conversations. We're, we're landing this right on the nose of, of eight o'clock. Um, Hannah or Margie, do we have any, maybe we have time for one good question. And if not, and if everyone wants to get to dinner, we can also do that too. I have a question here. This is Guru. Guru, go ahead. Yeah, it's a question to Sajal. Um, I was wondering if uh, he could explain the, uh, the patterns with the colors, you know, why choose only a single tone and explore it in different shades of the same tone? Why not multiple colors? So I think uh, this indigo, this is the indigo mainly. So I like that indigo color. I don't know exactly what, what, what the reason, but it, is, it has a very uh, uh, infinite kind of uh, effect, impact it, it gives me always. So I, I choose this one, that, that is the reason. There's an endless kind of thing that is uh, take you to a unknown uh, space. That's the reason. Interesting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, on that night note, I'd like to thank all of our amazing artists for joining us tonight. I think everyone through their work uh, represent what ICC is all about. Uh, six seven just amazing perspectives on the rich culture of India. You know, just, just for me as an observer, seeing the amazing people and generosity, um, seeing the, the layering, the spirituality, um, is just, uh, it makes it, again, it makes me feel like I'm stuck in my apartment and I need to get outside and I'm, I, I'm desperate to get to experience this culture uh, in real life. Um, um, so uh, with that, I just wanna say that as a reminder to all of our participants, um, much of the work that we looked at tonight is available. You can go to the ICC website and find the landing page for this show. You can click into each artist and see what work is available. Um, a percentage of every sale goes to benefit ICC. Um, if you don't see something you like, I'm sure ICC is still accepting donations for the good work that they do. Um, you can, uh, and if you can't figure out what you want to do, just uh, contact Margie at her email address right here. Um, I want to thank you all for having me. This has been such pleasure. And Margie, if you want to unmute, if there are any announcements uh, before we all break, um, please let us know. Um, I just want to thank you, Wright. This was fabulous. My um, cell phone has been buzzing with compliments to you and to all the artists. I hope everyone's been looking at the chat. Um, there have been tremendous, uh, you know, comments about how beautiful the work is, how thoughtful you've been, um, Wright. So I want to thank you for that. Yes, the show is going to be up through um, March 21st. It's going to be open. Uh, all the artists um, are open to doing commissioned work if you want to do that. Call them on the, um, if you want to talk to them more, they're available. And I would just want to thank them all for all the work they've done, for allowing us to show their work, and right for participating. We're delighted. It was a wonderful evening. Margie, thank you for making this so much fun and so easy for all of us. We know how much work you put in behind the scenes and, and on the scenes. So thank you for all that. Okay, everyone. I hope you had a glass of wine and enjoyed it. And uh, now, Take a look on the gallery. Cheers. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Margie, you're the best, thank you.